Hi scholars, today we're going to be learning about fractions. This is TEK 4.3c. This says I can determine if two fractions are equivalent using a variety of methods. Now equivalent means that it is the same or equal value and the variety of methods means you can use pictures or you can use multiplication or division by using simplest form, which I will discuss in this lesson. Let's get started. Before I begin talking about that T, let's review fractions real quick. Fractions give us and explain part of a whole. And so usually what you do is the top number will show you how much, and then the bottom number is going to be the total. So there are two kinds of um, pictures for fractions. There is region. This is when the things are connected. So here all my rectangles are connected or a set. Sets are usually not connected. So they can be shapes, they can be silverware, they can be a set of markers, they can be a set of tools. You know, it doesn't even have to be just these basic shapes all the time. So in this region here, two sixths are shaded in. So you can say two sixths or you can write two with the line. This line is um, another way of using the division symbol with fractions, which I've explained in class. But if you don't know that, that's okay. You'll, you, you can, you'll still understand fractions. Or you can say two out of six are shaded. Over here in this set, notice nothing is shaded, but I said two out of six are triangles. So the question can be, what is the fraction of triangles in this set? So you would count one, two, and that would be your numerator. The top number is called the numerator. And then the total, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's your bottom number. That's called the denominator. So let's begin talking about equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions are fractions that are equal to each other. Now, there's something I want to clarify before I keep going. A lot of students think that because the numbers are larger, that means the fraction is much bigger. And that's not always the case. So I wrote here, the denominator of the new equivalent fraction may be larger or smaller, but that doesn't mean they cannot be equal. So here's an example I want to start off with. One half is equal to two fourths. Notice that this number is larger than this number, and that's okay. That's the whole point of equivalent fractions. You're just saying, well, instead of two pieces, now I have four pieces. So what would the equivalent fraction be if I had four pieces? So you would say, well, if you have half here, then you would have two-fourths here to make that equal. Let's look at some manipulatives to help us understand. So right here, I have one whole, two halves that also equal a whole, and four fourths that equal a whole. So I'm going to just remove this, and I'm going to remove these pieces here. So as you can see, one half is equivalent to two fourths, even though this is a much larger this is a larger denominator and a larger numerator. Clearly, you can see one half is equal to two fourths. So, to explain how that works, a little trick that we use to help us understand is what you do is suppose you don't know what the numerator is. Let's say you're just given that and you're asked. What would the equivalent fraction be if I had fourths instead? You need to see 2 times what equals 4. It's two pieces. You are doubling the amount of pieces with your half. It's like you, you've cut your half in half, so now it's in fourths. And so if it's times 2 to get to 4, you have to do the same to the top. So 1 half times 2 equals 2, and that's how you know. And you have to do it to the bottom and the top. You can't 
just do it to the bottom number and leave the top number the same because it won't be equal. So let's say you figured out 2 times 2 equals 4, but you don't change that. Well, you can't say 1 half equals 1 fourth because if you look right here, that's not true. So you've got to make sure what you do to the bottom, you do to the top. Okay, let's look at some more examples. Okay, so let's start with an easy example. List all equivalent fractions equal to half. So what I did was I just wrote half and then I just put a bunch of blank fractions next to it. And we're going to look at my math manipulatives and decide from there. So here are all my fraction bars. We are looking for what is equivalent to half. So the easiest way to go about doing this is you would basically just take away half of everything. So if you notice, I can't do that with thirds. There's no half way with the thirds. So I don't know, I'm just going to take away one or maybe I'll just do that to, or I'll just do this to show that there's no possibility. I can do it with fourths. If you notice with the fifths, it doesn't match up either. With the sixths, it works. With the eighths, it works. With the tenths, it works. And with the twelfths, it works. Notice that four, six, fourths, sixths, eighths, tenths, and twelfths have halves. And they are also multiples of 2. Like when you skip count by 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And we notice thirds and fifths don't work. Because one reason is they are not multiples of 2. So um, when I explain to you up here, when we try to do this, we'll know why it doesn't work. Okay, so let's look at our marker board. Okay, so we said that one half is, is well, I'm going to go ahead and write all the different ones that we looked at. Okay, now with the fourths, we said one half is equal to two fourths. That's how many half I had down here. With the sixths, there were three of them. One, two, three, sixths. With the One, two, three, four were equal to half. With the tenths, I had one, two, three, four, five out of ten total. And with the twelfths, I had one, two, three, four, five, six out of twelve total that were equal to half. Over here, we couldn't really come up with anything. They were either going to fall short of a half or more than half. So when you look at this, you should be able to pick up on the pattern that when you double the number of pieces, your numerator also doubles. When you do that, when you look at this one, when I had half and I wanted to see what is equivalent to half when it's sixths, I actually tripled the amount of pieces. And so my numerator is also going to be tripled. When I do this, when I had eights, when I went from two pieces to eight pieces, I basically cut it into four, like I cut it four times. And so my numerator also is four. This one is times five. So times five like that. This one is times six. So times six like that. So like I said, you notice that if the denominator is a multiple of two, it will work. When the denominator is not a multiple of two, it's hard to find the equivalent fraction.
for half in that situation. Um, one thing I do want to share with you is that if you get the fraction backwards, like let's say I say what is equivalent to 6 twelfths when it's half. Or Okay, now let's do another example. List all fractions equivalent to 2 thirds. So looking at my pieces here, I want to find two-thirds, one-third, two-thirds, remove that one, and I want to pull everything away that's equal to it. So if you look at my fourths, there's not really a spot to pull it away from, so I mean that's the best I can do and that's not going to be considered equivalent. With the fifths, same thing, two less and that's too much. With the sixths, it does work. Okay, remember we're trying to get to we're trying to get two thirds. With the eighths, it doesn't work. With the tenths, very close, but I know it's hard to see with my camera, but it does not match up. And then with the twelfths, that is what it's going to be. Because I'm also using my sixth as a guide. My sixths, because I know my sixths are equivalent to thirds. So right here I'm just trying to follow the line and if you notice my tenths is too much, a little bit too much, and then my twelfths does fit. So having that information we are able to fill out this question. So two-thirds, let's look at some, let's write some examples. So with the fourths we also have fifths, sixths, and eights. Let's see if any of those would work. So with the fourths, we knew it wasn't we knew it wasn't gonna work. It's too much. So there really is no there is no possibility. And if you think about it, three times nothing equals fourths. When you look at the fifths, that doesn't work either. It's just a little bit too big. So when you try to set up an equivalent fraction, three times nothing will equal fifths. So there's really no way to do it. With the six, however, we did find a match. One sixth, two sixths, three sixths, four sixths. So on my marker board, I'm going to write four sixths. Now, here's where it's interesting. Three times two equals six. I doubled the number of pieces, so that means the my numerator will also get doubled. Let's look at the math manipulatives again so you can understand what I'm trying to say. I'm going to go ahead and remove the fourths and the fifths since those don't work. If you look right here, I originally had three-thirds. I had thirds and I am now comparing it to sixths. When I had thirds and I change it to sixths, I doubled the number of pieces. Look at this, one-third. The sixths are now two pieces that fit into there. This third is broken up into two pieces, so that's where the sixths match up. And then this third here, these two sixths match up. So I basically doubled the number of pieces. When you double the number of pieces, okay, you change it to sixths, then however many you have shaded in or, or whatever that you have, so if I have two thirds, then the amount my numerator will also double. So if I had two here, I'm going to have four here. And that's why when you double the amount of total pieces, then you're going to double the amount that you have or the amount shaded in or the amount that that person took or whatever to find the equivalent fraction. A lot of people are thinking, 
Well, I, d I times by 2, so it must be a much bigger fraction. No, it's only going to be...